So we're here, uh, we're just looking at our software that uh, we do video with. This is uh, V1 is what it's called. Uh, every swing that I've ever videoed uh, is, is in here and they're all dated. So uh, we're looking at Thomas. Uh, we've got a swing from, that was about what, two years ago? Yeah, I'd say about two years ago. So it, they're dated, they're, this one here's two years ago. This one's more recent here at Grand Dunes. So, you know, I, I do this, uh, with with students are, that are consistent, we may do checkups, and they, there's certain things that we look for. Um, on this particular one, we were looking at mostly setup, right? Like you were aimed yeah. pretty far right on this uh, left picture here, uh, and you can see your posture is different. So we worked a little bit on his setup balance here on the right, uh, and then like it depends on the guy, but sometimes I'll. It's probably not a good color to use red. A lot of the lines and stuff that you can draw on here are basically for my purposes so I can kind of have reference points. So we may talk to him about his balance uh, or lack of it on the left and then how the right picture is much better. So I'll just kind of go over with them. Okay, here's your setup. Line up too far to the right here on this left picture. Too much knee flex, uh, so on and so forth. And then over here on the left, we've got, or on the right, I should say, we've got some clubs on the ground. Uh, we've got them in better balance. And we're hitting a little bit of a different ball flight. So what was a ball flight before? That was like a pull, wasn't it? It was, yeah, always a draw or a pull hook. So because he was aimed so far right, the club would kind of come underneath. And he, he, he tried to manipulate it back over to the left. You can see where the ball took off there. So because you're lined up to the right, you kind of stand up and like yeah. flip it back over to the left. Yeah. And now we've kind of got the club a little bit higher, a little more in front of you. It comes down a little bit better. You see the golf ball's taking off more in front of him. He's turning out of the way better. Now your ball flight's more neutral. Yeah, yeah. Pretty, just straight up and down. You can do whatever you want to with it, right? Yes, sir. You can make it rain out here if you want. Yes, I could. <laughs> All day. So yeah, that's basically the video. I mean, I, if I'm doing a lesson, I'm gonna take several pieces of video from different angles. Um, a lot of it's for my purposes, so I can kind of see what he's doing. Um, I don't trust my eyes, I'm getting old, so I like the video camera. I like to be able to put it on here so I can see it. We go outside and, and hit some balls off the grass. I'd look at his ball flight, um, pay attention to tempo or stuff like that. And then I may come back in here and look more mechanical of what he's doing. And depending on what we see, we would maybe discuss that in the lesson. But I, I try and maybe get it down to something simple um, that we could focus on for the day and give him a way to practice on it. And he's usually pretty good about practicing. So. Cool. That's basically it. Some good stuff. So we've also got what's we have? So we got the focus band too, we can do that. That's probably yeah. pretty cool. Yeah. We were on this before, right? right? That was what? That was higher than yes. the last one, right? That's good. Are you trying to hit a draw? Yeah. Okay, good. The low draw, mid draw, high draw. Yes, <laughs> 
that's the mid fade. Yeah, it's supposed to be low. <laughs> so we failed there. Eh. Well, it all depends on perspective. <laughs> Is it on? Is it on? I can call it. You need someone to call a shot in your backswing, though. That would, yeah. be, that would be really talented. <laughs> Call it when I get back when you get there. to you get to the top, yeah. And then so I have to do they it. fade, yeah. Oh, that'd be cool. Thank you, probably. <laughs> it's a matter of thought right now. something I learned from Lee Trevino. Mm -hmm. But that match about as close to real turf as you get to. This thing is nice. I was gonna say it's got some really bounce good. in it, it's got Let's see what happens when it's solid. Yeah, it even hits that shot. Yeah it good. does. I thought I was just doing good. All right. Much in just the height of the team? Uh, no, I was. I don't have enough room, really. How far back that was? I had to maneuver a little bit. Why don't you uh, introduce yourself again and, and tell us about your golf game again and uh, uh, my how long you've been working with oh, Dale? Okay, sorry. <laughs> my name's Thomas. Uh, been working with Dale for about two and a half years now. Uh, I started off four years ago. Uh, I mean, my worst round has been like 127. And uh, I said, that was the worst I'll play. And after that, I've gone nothing but lower. So uh, I'm down to about a 1.5 handicap now. Still working on my game a lot. Uh, Dale helps out a tremendous amount. So uh, I'm, uh, I'm playing golf just to play tournament or professional golf. Still working on that goal. Uh, still got to get a little bit better than a one handicap, but it's a it's a goal I'm striving for. Hopefully, I'll reach it soon. And other than that, I just uh, love living around this area. The beach is always nice, and uh, try and golf as much as I can. Now, how often do you meet with Dale? 
cough and you... Uh, whenever, we need, whenever it's kind of convenient, whenever I need any help with my game, or if we want to go out and play a couple holes, we'll go out and do that. That way I can still try and compete against Dale. Uh, he's a he's a lot better golfer than I am at this right now, but give me about a right? few more months I'll Watch probably out, have man. him, you know, giving me a few strokes, <laughs> or I'll be giving him a few strokes, so. But yeah, so uh, I see him probably, uh, just depends on what we'll set up. So certain times of year, we'll set up a couple more, uh, we'll set up more lessons for a several month period, try and figure out what we can start working on and try and really get my game as good as it needs to be. But uh, for the most part, I see him maybe like once or twice a month. And uh, we'll play every every now and then. We're trying to get it going, so we play every week. Keep a good. good rhythm going. Should we put this on? Yeah. We used that before. Oh, yeah. Tell us what you got here. This looks. Right. This We're gonna see if it'll looks. if it'll turn on first for that size. Yeah. Let me put this down. So this is the focus band. I don't know if I charged it last night. We'll see. Yeah, it feels kind of weird. About to work out. Doesn't get any shocks or anything, right? <laughs> no. <laughs> Just mine. Maybe if I get in the water. Just a little bit. If you hit it bad, it. Uh, So this thing uh, basically measures what you're thinking. Now that is really, yeah. that is something there. I've used this once before, we went on the course and played with it, um, basically to try and figure it out, see how it works. It'll uh, tell you whenever you're over your ball, whether or not you're focusing. Usually it's uh, when you're behind the ball, you're not focusing at all, and then right when you get over top. Usually you'll see, it'll indicate it, and you'll see what, it, what I mean by that. And it'll show you when your brain's focused and your eyes are pretty much set on where you're going to hit the ball. Um, it's pretty complicated stuff, but it, it's fun to, fun to work with. You can definitely see when, uh, when you're focused, you'll hit a better shot. When you're unfocused, you'll see your shots are off, left or right. So it's, uh, it's pretty impressive to, to see that work through this little headband here. So uh, it's still working on it but it's pretty fun to work with so what that does it's going to send a signal to your phone Dale you can see what yeah it runs on an app so uh, and when you say you see what they're thinking is it more of a nerve more of a mind or nerve it's basically uh, two sides of your brain so go ahead and just like hit a couple shots and you can look at the um, like I'll just turn this thing on here so there's two sides of your brain, uh, left brain, which is going to show up red, right brain, which is going to show up green. So I normally just leave this thing on while the person's hitting shots. I, I like it better on the course because, you know, there's, that's, where, that's really where you're working on your thinking. We could sit around the range and hit 40 balls at the same target, but it, that's easy. Um, so right now he's kind of analyzing what he's going to do with his shot. And that was a practice swing, another practice swing. So if the practice swing's mechanical, normally it'll show up red, which is bad usually. But the idea is to try to get green like the second before you hit the ball. So you probably hear the shot here when he hits it. So if you look there, he was in the green, which he was on the right side of his brain, which is a very like unconscious, he's trusting, uh, there's no checklist of what he's trying to do, and he's probably got a pretty good plan for what he wants the shot to do, uh, and he's kind of visualizing that as he goes. So as he's working up to hitting the ball, it's okay to think analytically, like, okay, I've got 163 yards, the wind is going this way, uh, so on and so forth. But we don't want him to be mechanical. We don't want him to do any sort of checklist, like put my, my foot here and hinge my wrist or anything like that. So usually that's gonna take away from performance. So if I can get him to externally focus on what's gonna happen out there while he's going through his routine, he'll, he'll most likely hit a pretty good shot. Um, and it's tough when you're taking lessons because if you're, if I give, somebody something mechanically in a lesson they're going to want to try it on the golf course uh, and the hard part is you've got to practice it enough to where you don't have to think about it on the golf course it, to ultimately play is, is to your potential I guess but um, this is 
Jason Day used this. He went from like 35th in the world to number one over like nine month, month, nine month period. Um, golfers are always trying to figure out like, okay, I, I hit pretty good on the range. Why can't I play good on the course? This is why. Because you're, you're not thinking about the right things that you should be thinking about on the golf course in order to just kind of let go and, and perform. So like when I ask people, what's the best round of golf you ever played? They'll tell me, and then I ask them, well, what were you thinking about that day? And almost always they'll say, well, I wasn't really thinking about much at all, just the target type of thing. And if you ask them, you know, what's the worst round of golf you ever played? What were you thinking about then? And then what do you say? Usually it's everything, right? You know, I, I was hitting it bad, it didn't feel good, I tried this swing thought on the first hole and this swing thought on the second hole, and you just dig yourself deeper and deeper into a hole. Um, so even if your your game doesn't feel like it's where you want it to be, uh, you can only screw it up by like adding more stuff to it or trying to fix it while you're on the golf course or something like that. Um, so you want that left you want to be left brain right is that correct? I want to be uh, I want him to be on the right side of his brain which will turn green the second before he hits the ball if he's green before that even better uh, so we'll kind of see what this one does so that was contact right there he was he was green he was focused um, it also I don't know how it does it but it measures your eyes so <laughs> If you, wow. if you are looking out at your target during your routine and you're able to focus on a small object for more than, I think, two seconds, yeah. it'll kind of give it this thing that says quiet eye, and it'll, you'll get that little laser, the little dark green laser, which is really good. So during that little 10-step process, if you can get one or two or three quiet eyes, like there's one, there's two, there's three, you're going to perform better. Um, and he's pretty good about right before the ball, he kind of focuses. I don't know. What do you look at? Um, the cup. Or the, where I'm going to hit my target. I focus like right on that point, and I look at it all the way up to my ball. And then right before I do it, I set up, and then I look down. Like on a putt. Yeah. yeah. And then I'll look up, and then I'll look back down, and then I'll be focused on right where my point is and right where my ball is. But at. you're thinking about the point on the front of the cup yeah. or whatnot, right? Yeah. As you're kind of simultaneously looking at the ball because you have to hit it. Exactly. But your, your, your brain is at the cup. Yes. Whereas a lot of amateur golfers, their brain would be in this bubble of, okay, I got to make a perfect stroke. I got to do what Dale told me in the lesson. And that's all fine and good. But if you really want to play good, you've got to get away from the mechanics and just let go and have some sort of idea of what you're trying to do with the, with the golf ball. So right here, I'm going to try and think about this one a little bit more. See that little draw. Yeah. So I can change the. I, I can make it more difficult for him if we. Uh... So you probably have a session with him in the Apple Score, based on how many shots that, you, that he's taken, or is it just over? Yeah, you can. Um, I normally like if you're on a course, I would I would just look at the app as he's going through his pre-shot routine and hit a shot, and then I wouldn't turn it on again until he's about to hit another shot, but. Um, so this time I made it a little bit harder. So let's maybe step back this time just for fun. And I want you to like just get super mechanical and, and, and try and think about all this stuff in your swing that you're trying to do and every lesson that you've ever taken and everything you've ever watched on the Golf Channel and just try and put it in. And you better hit a good shot because everybody's watching, okay? Just think about what the meaning of life is. Yeah, so, you know, all the lessons you've ever taken uh, remember all. Try to remember all that stuff at once. You gotta, you gotta put it all together right here. Okay. Okay. Really quick and then what you watched on the golf channel <laughs> last night. All right. And then we really don't know what kind of shot we're gonna hit. We're just real mechanical right now. So that was the worst shot you hit by far. That was like a 30-yard hook, and he was in the red pretty much the entire time. Yeah. You went green for about one second when you were when, when you were gonna try and think about what kind of shot you're gonna hit, but you yeah. were so flooded with all this other garbage that you yeah, couldn't get in there. Exactly. Okay, so let's 
Uh, let's do another one. And Last Let's get behind the ball, right? Okay. So this time we're gonna like what's the course you play all the time? Farm set. Okay, what's the part three where you might hit a six iron? Um it'd be number six. Number six, that's the one over the water? Yeah. Okay, so we're gonna pretend the pen is like back right, okay, near the water. Oh, okay. okay, so I want you to picture that hole out there. Alright. Okay, and then tell me what kind of shot you want to hit. Uh, nice little fade. And where do you want it to land exactly? Probably about five to ten yards left of the pin. Let's be more specific. Uh, five yards. Five is good. Okay, yeah. and then once it hits the green, what's it going to do? It's going to check and then roll slightly to the right. Okay. It's and then, uh, so that's kind of what you want to do now. Yep. Okay, so once you got that picture, you just kind of walk in and yep. you're basically just thinking about what you just told me and you'll do your routine. So that was a pretty good shot. And if you look, he's still in the green. He was still focused. He's even focused now, he's even after the shot. So that wasn't a perfect shot, but it was a pretty darn good one. Yeah. Um, and he didn't analyze what he did wrong or if he did anything wrong. That wasn't anything that he's focused on right now. It's just more like just visualizing the shot, right? Yeah. Okay. Thinking about it. You want to do another one? Yeah. So this time we're going to do the same hole. Okay. It pins in the front. Okay, so it's red. And what kind of shot you want to hit? Still about the same little cut. Uh, pretty high cut. That's about it. Okay. And you want to land it where? About uh, right on the pin this time. Right so, on the pin. Uh, probably maybe two yards left of it. At the two most. yards left of it. So just kind of imagine that hole out there. And then where do you work? Uh, Heather Glenn. Heather Glenn, you, you used to work at California Dreaming, right? I still do. Do they have to-go cups there? Yeah. Okay, so what I want you to imagine is a California Dreaming to-go cup on the front of the green where you want the ball to land. What color are the cups? Uh, blue. Blue, yeah. okay. And then the lid? Uh, blue. Blue. It's all, it's all different like shades of colors. There's something like that. Okay, There's so like seven colors. Kind of picture that cup sitting on the green out there and then just kind make the ball go towards the, that okay. blue thing that you're thinking about. <laughs> all right, blue cup. So that was a really good shot, right? Yeah, right at the cup. So how far offline was that? <laughs> you almost hit the pin, right? Yeah, yeah. It, was, right? That was it literally went six inches right at the that pin. Was, yeah, that was right around the other point. Now, because you were so focused on the California Dreaming Blue to Go Cup, you had no time to think about mechanics, right? No, I was just thinking. You didn't think about any mechanics, right? Get it in the hole. Get it yeah. in the cup. And then do you remember how you put your foot down or where, you, where your hips were or anything like that? No. No. Just wasn't really focused on it. Just the shot, as soon as I lined up, that was it. As soon as I got right over the ball here, it felt like everything was right. I just had to do the swing. Do you feel like the ball, you maybe, because you visual, visualized it, that it already happened and you're just kind of in a video game and you're just playing it? Yeah. Right. <laughs> that's, yeah. That's Did you feel any pressure on that shot? Not much. Uh, just thinking about the cup a lot. and. Yeah, that's about it. Now there's a pond on that hole. Did you ever think about the pond? No. Oh well, I I took it out of regard since it was the front pin, and that was about yeah. it. But I still got to be worried about it. But you never really told your brain what you didn't want it to do, right? Like yeah. don't hit it in the don't water. Don't hit it in the pond. I never, never said that. Really never crossed my mind. It was more pond. give your brain some direction on, or give the ball some direction on what you want it to do, yeah. right? So I was just mainly thinking about where I want to start the ball at, and what I want the ball to do in the air. So I was thinking of the hole where I know there's bunkers left of it, so I was aiming at the bunkers left of it with just a baby fade or cut so it would end up just right at the pin. I know if I missed that shot really wide right, it'd probably go in the water, but I didn't think about the water because it's not what I want to think about whenever I'm doing my shot. So one of your questions when we did the playing lesson this morning was, um, I'm playing in a tournament this weekend, there's some really good players. Um, how am I supposed to beat those good players? Or if I shoot a really good score the first day, mm -hmm. what am I supposed to do on the first hole the next day? And what, what are we talking about? Talking about don't worry about any other player, how they're playing. Um, just worry about the same shot. Just think about what you did the day before. Just try and do your same routine, same shot, 
take it each hole as its own hole. Even though I played it the day before, still a different hole today, whether the wind's up or not. So I still got to play the hole to the best I can play it. So the, what you're trying to do in that 10 seconds before you hit the ball, what your playing competitor did the day before, should that have any influence on what you're doing on no. that 10 seconds? You shouldn't. No, now, if you let that come into that, yes. you're probably going to mess it up. Exactly. Or if in that 10 seconds you're, you're thinking about how good you're playing that day, you're two or three under, or how bad you're playing, you're eight over par, that can only mess it up. Exactly. Yeah. So being under or over par doesn't have any influence on what you're, try you're playing. It shouldn't. It shouldn't. But that's what most of the time will happen. I'll know that I'm like, oh man, I'm four over par, I really need to get two or three more birdies here. And then as soon as I start thinking that, I'll start messing everything up even worse, and that next hole I'll probably triple, and then I'll be double what I just was, and then I'll be very mad or aggressive about it, and keep going with the same process, which is wrong. So you're, when you mess up, you're thinking about the past, mm -hmm. what you shot yesterday, or the future, I better get my act together and birdie yeah. the last four holes, or I'm going to mess up and have a bad tournament, yeah. right? Either one of those can mess you up, right? Absolutely, yeah, yeah. So you gotta know that like each shot counts as one and you just gotta give it give it the attention on each shot, just do the best you can yeah. and add them up at the end type of thing, right? Exactly. Yeah. So if the guy you're playing with is shooting lights out, I mean there's nothing you can do about that. If you train the forty foot birdie putt, train the forty foot thirty putt. You can only do so much. Maybe so, it'll help you visualize your ball going in the hole. Exactly. <laughs> so yeah, I mean, taking that concept on is much better than it especially how I've been playing the last few days where every time I'm doing pretty decent and I'm staying right around par, I'll bogey like one or two bad holes and then I'll get to the back nine. I'll be like, all right, well, just got to keep playing solid. And I won't think about it until I get toward, closer towards the end. And then uh, when I still realize I'm like three or four over, I'm like, all right, well, there's like five holes left. Get two or three more birdies in here real quick. And that's when I start going downhill more. It's when I start trying to make it, make it up towards the end or in, in the middle of the round when I think I can still do it. I'm, I'm hitting the ball good. So I'm trying to hit it better at that point in order to try and score better. Which yeah, then you're I getting think, away from what you yeah, should be doing. Yeah, so then I start thinking more about it. I start being less focused about it, which I think I'm more focused because I'm thinking about it the whole time. I'm right over my ball thinking I got to hit this with that perfect little fade. I have to make sure I take the club back perfectly right here. And then I just chop at it and then it goes into the water. So when you on the course and you, you give yourself some like a command, like make sure you take it back this way or make sure you turn or something like that. How's the result usually? Uh, not, not as good as it would be if I wasn't thinking about it. Yeah. Usually when I just stop thinking about it and I have my mind focused on either the target that I'm trying to hit or the spot on the ball I want to hit or where I want to hit it on the club, something pretty precise. As long as I have it just focused on one, one object at one time, I hit the ball pretty much a lot better than I would any other way. So what would you say for like a, like that guy we had this morning with us that was uh, um, an average golfer yeah. and um, we got up on the, what was that, sixth par four with a bunker in the middle of the, yeah. and up until that he hadn't hit very many good shots because no, he, he was super hit. mechanical, he never even looked at the target. Terrible direction. And I said, okay, what do you, what do you want to do on this shot? He says, well, there was a bunker in the middle of the fairway, so I said, well, uh, I normally just aim at the bunker, and then if I miss, it'll either be right or left of the bunker, and that's kind of my thought. I'm like, okay, that's terrible. Let's redo this. <laughs> so there was like a cart track from where the mower had gone to the right of the bunker, yeah. and I said, do you see that? And he said, yeah, I see it. So I said, okay, let's aim to the right of the bunker, five yards, and then just hit your normal shot. And uh, up until that point, he hadn't hit fairway. No, he was all over the place. Uh, so he gets focused on the three little lines that were to the right of the thing, and uh, I was like, okay, just make a comfortable swing, you know, don't, that's all. And then he almost drove the green, right? Yeah, it went yeah, right best, around the bunker. It's a short par four, but best yeah. drive of the day by far. And uh, for the last three or four holes, he did pretty good. Yeah, absolutely. So I said, okay, you know, the first five holes, he was just in his bubble, like, okay, I've got to do this, 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 and this, and blah, blah, blah. And he had no idea what he was trying to do outside. outside. Yeah. So once we got him, like, once I had him look, like, okay, it's like, let's do something out there. Yeah. Then he started doing better. Let's not look at the giant sand bunker in the middle of the way. Let's look at the nice little target to the side. 
Yeah, go easily at that. And average golfer, right? Like yeah. bogey golfer and oh, you had perfect shot. Perfect shot. But I think the way the bogey golfers think is I'm not good enough to aim at something like that, yeah. small like that. But yet it worked. Oops. <laughs> <laughs> Um, I don't know. I mean, do you think this would work for everybody? I feel like it would like help more people out because a lot of times people are, like he said, they're focused on the big, like one of the bigger objects out there because they know how inconsistent they are. So they feel like if their target's a little bit bigger, it'll be easier to hit into that target. And when you get more of a precise thought on it and you're more focused on just like one, one thing out there, I feel like that's when you start hitting the ball a little bit better. You start hitting it more towards your target if you're doing that. Directly. So I think most guys, when they go out and hit balls, average players, like they don't really have a target. They just hit balls and then they walk off 30 minutes later and they said, I'm hitting it pretty good. Yeah. 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 Every ball hit the range. Yeah, you're right. <laughs> <laughs> but so in their mind, they're like, oh, you know, this is fine. And then they get on the golf course and then there's water and wind and the pin and their buddies are looking at them. And now they can't just do that. So they. They're, they're practicing the wrong way. I've so they, they expect to hit it at a pin on the golf course, but yet they never practice to something specific when they when they practice. I still haven't, honestly. I think I did about two and a half weeks ago. I didn't play for like three days, and uh, that's a lot for me. So uh, I finally went back out to the range, and I started to hit my driver after I warmed up with most of my other clubs. All my irons are going straight, all my wedges are going straight. I get to my driver, and every time it's got a 40-yard slice to the right, and I was doing everything I could to try and stop it from slicing. I was any any method, any idea, and I couldn't figure out what it was. But every time I was on the range, I couldn't do it. But as soon as I step out on the golf course, I look down the fairway and I see right where my target is. I get up there and I hit the ball straight down the middle. <laughs> but like I could not do it to save my life on the range. But as soon as I got out there and I knew right where my target was. I was, I'm pretty sure I was actually swinging towards my target, where beforehand on the range, since it's such a wide open area, I was just swinging at it with no concern of my target. I wasn't trying to hit the certain pole down the end, I was just swinging at it thinking it's going to go there when it went 40 yards to the right and out of the way. And uh, once I started getting that idea down, I started trying to all right, I went out to the range, and I was like, I want to hit that target, so I feel like I swing at that target. And I do that, and then I hit it, and it goes right towards the target. But if I'm not focusing on the exact target or where my body is turning to or swinging at, most of the time, if, if I'm swinging wildly, it's just going to go all over the place. Even now, if I just swing wildly at it, it can still go all over, all over the place. It, it seems almost too simple. It shouldn't work. Yeah. Right? Like, this is so simple that it's... Surely it's not that easy. It's got to be something more complicated or a secret to golf. Like, yeah. uh, maybe I'll tune in the golf channel and find out <laughs> what the secret to golf is. And if I try that on the course, surely it'll work. But it's almost like trimming away all this garbage and getting down to just... Making it more simple. Yeah. So, I mean, who's playing the best golf right now on the tour? Dustin Johnson. He probably keeps it pretty simple. Yeah. One big drive, one big chip. <laughs> yeah. One big drive, one big chip. So. Which is a good way to do it. As you can. Right, that's about it on the focus band. Very good.